Usually when we come to the Adelaide Entertainment Centre, it is about spending the night rocking and bopping. This morning, thousands of secondary students are coming in to see the RAA present Street Smart in partnership with the Motor Accident Commission. If they've been told anything about it, they'll know it is shocking. Justine, there's a lot of blood. Oh, oh, Justine, I think he's dead. I think Chris is dead. How do you end up over here? No, he can't be. Oh. Adam, get a grip. Think. Oh. You've got to call an ambulance or the cops. Oh. Oh. What do I Claire? say to them? Claire, can you hear me? Justine, what do I tell them that my friend's dead? Just ring them. I have to look after Claire. Oh. Andrew, if you're okay, do you think you can get out of the car and give me a hand? What do I say? Justine, what's the number I call again? I'm Triple zero, Adam. Triple zero. Yeah, yeah. Hello, we need the police. There's been a crash. Yeah, my friends, I, I think one of them could be dead. Um, they hit a motorcyclist or something. I don't know, but he, he's still alive. Uh, where are we? Um, jeez. Uh, I think we're just out of Wollonga, Justine. Wollonga, right? Yeah, Victor Harbour Road. Yeah, yeah. Tell them to hurry. Yeah, Victor Harbour Road, Victor Road. We're going to need an ambulance. Um, my friend Chris is possibly dead and there's a bikey. He's bleeding everywhere as well. Can you please help us? Bill, this, you, you, you've done this Street Smart initiative now a few times. You, you must believe it works. Why do you think it gets into the students' minds? I think it uh, connects at an emotional level to see a real crash scene um, or what's effectively a real crash scene and a real story unfold in front of them. I'm sure it doesn't get across to everyone, but certainly a number it does. And I've had um, over the years a number of people come up to me months later or even a year later and say, oh, I saw you at that Street Smart thing. That really made me think about, uh, about what I do when I get uh, behind the wheel of a car. One of the things you introduced very early is that apart from the massive effect of a death on the road, there are things the survivors can do very early. Certainly, um, someone who's on the scene uh, when the crash happens, so someone who's in the, one of the vehicles, or someone who arrives just after the crash happens, can do a number of things. One of the first things, of course, is to call triple zero and, and call for help. But uh, sometimes someone may not be breathing, as in, in this circumstance, where Claire's head is slumped forward and she's not breathing, and all it is a matter of putting her head back in the normal position. So gently lifting her head so it's in the normal alignment. Mm. So they're still giving the car a bit of a belt behind us. So uh, even even the, the sense of how damaged a car can be in a what starts off, as, as you say in the script, it starts off as something that, well, they don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's, um, it certainly starts off with uh, people thinking it's not going to happen. And in the script you'll hear um, Andrew, the driver, say, well, it's not my fault. And people often say things are not my fault. What they mean is, I didn't mean this to happen. It's not quite the same as it's not my fault. Just because you don't mean something to happen doesn't mean that you didn't contribute to it in some way. You also emphasise that it's not one massive thing that goes wrong. No, it's usually a number of things that line up. Um, we're all human beings, we all make mistakes. Unfortunately, sometimes those mistakes can all add up. In this case, um, Andrew was uh, going a little bit faster than he should have been going. He was uh, not drunk, but he wasn't sober, and uh, he was looking at a text message. He wasn't using the phone to make a call, but he was looking at a text message, so he was distracted, and he didn't see the motorcyclist until too late, and that all added together to cause a disaster. Bill, if there is... Uh if, if there's a message that you hope gets taken home from this, what is it? I think that uh, the message I'd like people to understand is that uh, we're all responsible for what we do when we get behind the wheel of a car and we have to understand that and try and concentrate on driving and concentrate just on driving when we're behind the wheel. Well, we're getting ready for the students to come in. Thanks for your time today. Thanks very much. Ben, you've been involved in this. Just take us back to the beginnings of Street Smart. Street Smart started in South Australia in 2009, uh, where we uh, had our first event. We copied an idea that Westmead Hospital in Sydney had been putting on, and we thought it was a really good concept to bring to South Australia, which is what the RA has done. What kind of things come out of your uh, surveying the students? Okay, so at the beginning, we asked them uh, before they come to Street Smart, what sort of car do you want? Um, is it important that your car looks good, or is it important that your car has a high safe rating and things like that? Um, and uh, after Street Smart we, did, we asked them the same question and we can see the dramatic change so that's what Street Smart does. Street Smart tells kids that it's really important to uh, be a safe driver, it's really important to choose a safe car. 
This year, there's been a second presentation of Street Smart thanks to extra motor accident commission funding. Thousands more students have experienced it. And of course, we all hope that the message gets through.